In this exercise, we'd like to compute the angle measure between these two planes given here. Negative 5x plus y plus 2z equals 12. And the other plane, and that plane is in what's called general form. And then the other plane is written in what we call standard form. 4 times x plus 1 minus y plus 3 plus z equals 0. And, you know, these uh, planes here could have been written in either form. I just did one of each just to show you that you could do this regardless of what form that it's written in. So I, I see what I'm after. I'm, I want this angle measure here. We'll call it theta measured between these two planes here. And in the last video, we saw a nice little trick. Rather than messing around with that angle at all, you can look at each of these guys' normal vectors, which we'll call this vector, we'll call it N1 and the yellow plane's normal vector, we'll call that N2. And if we find the angle between those two vectors, that's the same thing as our theta. So that lets us deal with vectors instead of planes, which we're a lot more comfortable with. So step one, let's read off what these two normal vectors are. So we'll have N1, and then we'll have vector N2. This is very quick and easy to read off what the normal vectors are. You just look at the coefficients of the x and the y and the z. So for plane one, the normal vector is negative five, one, two. And even though plane two is in standard form, you can still read off the normal vector very easily. It's four, negative one, one. A uh, quick little side note. Um, the 1 and the 3 and the 12, etc., um, those have no bearing on the normal vectors for these planes. Um, you're only looking for the, at the coefficients to find the normal vectors. So when you find the angle between these two guys, then we're done. That's theta, which is also our theta. So let's find the angle between these two guys. So if you remember the formula that we're working off of is a, a, a dot product formula, which I'm going to skip some of the details. And, uh, and basically, if you solve that formula for theta, which I'll just go ahead and do right now, then you would get arc cosine or inverse cosine of n1 dot n2 divided by the magnitude of n1 times the magnitude of n2 with one extra little twist to it. Um, this is the formula you got um, some time ago about finding the angle measure between two vectors, but I'd really like for this angle to be an acute angle because if for two planes, if it goes past 90, then I'll just take the angle less than 90 on the opposite side because two planes are always going to cross at an X. So um, one of these angles will always be less than 90. Uh, if it gets to be more than 90, I'll just take the one on the other side. So to make sure that the arc cosine gives me a value in the first quadrant, just zero to 90, I'm going to put absolute value bars around the dot product, which will make sure that it's positive and cosine is only positive in the first quadrant, or first and fourth quadrant, but in our case, it would, it would just give us a result in the first quadrant. All right, so let's do these things and we'll, we'll have our answer. So uh, let's see, theta will equal arc cosine of, and I've got my calculator here, so you can do the same if, if you like. Um, of something. Let's see here. All right, let's take n1 dot n2. And I may not write down all these details, but I'll just kind of squeeze them in wherever I can fit them in. The dot product n1 dot n2 would be negative 5 times 4, so that's negative 20. Uh, 1 times negative 1, so that's negative 1, so plus negative 1. And 2 times 1 is 2. So negative 21 plus two is negative 19, but we have the absolute value, which will give us positive 19. And then the magnitude of N1, uh, let's see, man, I, I, here, let's, let's just squeeze it down here maybe. Magnitude of N1, that'll be the square root of 25 and one and four, because I squared the i, j, and k components, adding them up, and then we'll take their square root. So 25 and 1 make 26, and 4 makes 30. So I root 30 times square root of, let's take the magnitude of N2. That'll be the square root of 4 squared is 16, plus 1, plus 1. Negative 1 squared and 1 squared are both 1. 
So 16, 17, 18, I believe. All right, make sure your calculator is in degree mode, which mine is, and be careful with your parentheses and all those good things. And we'll take the arc cosine of 19 over square root of 30 times the square root of 18. Again, make sure all your parentheses are good. All right, and I got 35.15 degrees. And of course, that's an approximation. 35.15 degrees. Um, if we had left this negative, in, in fact, let me do this real quick. Let me go back in here. And if we change that 19 to a negative 19, it would have given us 144 degrees, which is the complement of, um, of uh, 35 degrees. Uh, basically 144 or 145, it's actually 144.85. These two add up to 180. So um, what we're doing is we're taking the acute angle out of those two. So that's why we needed that absolute value bar there. So anyways, that's how you find the angle measure between two planes. Basically, you just take each of their normal vectors and then use your formula that has dot products and whatnot to find the angle measure between those normal vectors. And then that'll be the same as the angle measure between the planes.